Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. This is our first Microsoft Power BI UK webinar. Um, it's absolutely amazing um, to be here with you all. Um, even though we're going through some strange times at the moment, I really appreciate everybody taking the time out to join us. And I'm frantically clicking admit button as more and more people join us as I'm speaking. Um, but without any further ado, within this session, um, we're, we're here with a fantastic Leonardo Kapinski all the way from Brazil. Now, Leonardo is a Power BI master and certified trainer, um, and his specialist area um, is visualization. So it's absolutely amazing to have him here with us today, um, really for the fact that for at, le at least the last three months, every Power BI visualization I've seen on LinkedIn um, has hailed back to Leonardo's course um, in some way, shape, or form. So it's an honor to have him here to be able to share this with all of us. Um, as I say, just some housekeeping. Um, please, if you can, keep all of your microphones off and ensure that your videos are off. We will have a Q&A section at the end of um, the webinar. So please do feel free to ask questions throughout in the chat and the QA functionality of the meeting. And I will moderate those questions and put them to Leonardo um, at the end. OK, so Leonardo, over to you. Thank you very much, Leon. Thank you very much. I'm very honored to be here. This is my first international webinar, so it's a pleasure. Thank you very much. And I love to see people from all around the world. So that's great. That's great. Fantastic. Can I start? <laughs> yes, indeed. Please do. Okay. Let me just present my share my screen here. Perfect. Okay. Okay, so just tell me if you can see my screen. And yes, can indeed. Okay. okay, so we're going to talk about visualization techniques to build amazing dashboards. All right, so my name is Leonardo Karpinski. I am from Brazil and I am a certified trainer, certified trainer from, from here, Brazil, Microsoft, and also a data analyst associate. And I always like to start by talking about the seven pillars to master Power BI. Okay, so Power BI is not, a, not only a visualization tool. It can work with ETL, with modeling data, uh, data, data modeling, calculations, and you can do a lot, a lot of things inside of Power BI. Visualization is your first entrance, your, your, the first thing your, your user will notice. But everything in the back end must be all also aligned, well designed, and so on. So that's why I always say about these seven pillars, because it's very important, OK? You must understand everything that Power BI can handle. So let me just copy and paste here, OK, for you to understand what I'm talking about. So we always start from the ETL process, right? We extract, we transform data, and this is the ETL phase, extract, transformation, and load. We can also do some data modeling inside of Power BI, creating relationships, creating a star schema, and so on. We can create DAX measures. So the fourth phase is the calculation phase. What we're going to talk about is the fifth, fifth phase. This, this pillar here is very important. Because it's the first thing your user will see. So that's if the user doesn't like your dashboard, your the design of your dashboard, they're there are good chances that he will not follow along. So that's why uh, design of dashboards is so important. After this, we have to share with others. We have to, to send this dashboard for other people to consume. And we can schedule automatic refreshes. So all of this, all of this process is automated. All right? So let's focus here on visualization. And why is it so important? Why is design so important? As I said, is the first thing your user will notice, right? So it must be it must be beautiful. It must have a good design with uh, with all recommendations I'm going to present in a few moments. Also, because we can read, humans can can read and understand visuals and graphs faster and better than text. Similar, it, it happens the, the same way when we are reading or when we enter an, a website we look for images right we see some images when we are 
reading and it's going to be easier to understand to see oh i want to i want to read more about this because i saw an image i saw something that that keep, kept my my attention so that's why it's important also uh leon if you feel free to 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 say something if you want okay when you Perfect. want to that's perfect, Leonardo. What I will do is just ask again, because we have had a few new joiners. Please, could I ask that all of your cameras are off and your microphones as well, please? Thank you. The third, the third uh, point here that I want to say is about the understanding and confusion. So when we have a good design, uh, we understand better. Okay, so it improves the, our understanding and reduces confusion. So that's why design is so important. And of course, the great benefit of all of this is because our user will like our dashboard and will consume, will use this dashboard for longer than another dashboard that does not have design, uh, a well-designed prop, uh, a well-designed interface. Okay, that's very important because of this. And I want to show, I want to show you some examples of my work and my students' work. Uh, regarding dashboard design. Let me show you here. So these are some of the examples, okay, that I give as bonus in my course and I teach in in some events. For example, this is sales performance. All interactive. So you click here on a bar, it filters the other visuals. We can work with this feature called tooltip that shows more information about some, ex some points here in, the, in this graph. All right. Also, we can use maps, all interactive. As I said, if I filter here, North America, this visual is filtered as well, Europe, so on. This is a very nice feature called drill through. So if I click here, for example, whey protein. OK, so I want to I want to see all details about orders with whey protein. I click there and I have here a button that I can click. And I will see all details for this product only. I can go back and so on. I can change pages using buttons. So very, very easy to navigate, very easy to understand. Another one, this is from one of my students. For the same project, okay, that I, I teach in this course, but the, 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 uh, this has a, a very nice summarization in the front page and this filter pane that I like it a lot. When you click here, you can actually this is the navigation menu. Okay, then you click there. You can change pages right here, or you can apply some filters clicking on there. Very nice as well, because because you don't you don't use space for visuals. You just hide these filters, hide these panes, and you can you can just expand with this button. So let's see. For example, if I want to change pages, I can go here. Okay, very nice as well. This is for financial, it's a financial dashboard with a cash flow. So very nice as well with this background. And I'm gonna talk about these backgrounds, okay? So it's very important to have a good background, to have consistency along other pages. So for example, here on the second page, I have a balance sheet or a cash flow here, and then I can expand. I can change, for example, my 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 matrix here to to compare with the due date instead of the settlement date or issue date okay so i can do all this filtering to be dynamic another one very nice for uh, freight revenue so here it's a fleet management dashboard okay with some pages as well right there let me go faster a little bit. I like this a lot with the ranking. This is in Portuguese, but the idea here is, here is to show only the visuals. So this is the uh, salesperson ranking. Everybody loves rent to rank people, right? And to put in, the, in a TV, for example, or something. This one, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be presenting, I'm gonna be teaching how to create great from scratch during an event on March. Okay, we can talk about this later, okay? So, so this is a revenue and margin dashboard with revenue, gross margin, and also 
we can use here this tooltip. And this, I'm going to show at the end. This is a very nice visual inside of Power BI. It's a new visual that uses artificial intelligence called smart narratives. So all of this is dynamic. You, you write some text, and you can place some measures, for example, like this, to be dynamic. So if I change here, for example, from April to May, you see that the numbers change, right? So also very good for storytelling. Uh, I think Leonardo is, is, is key to point out here that all of the visuals that you're showing us are visually stunning. So when we look at a lot of Power BI visuals or when I see a lot of Power BI visuals um, in my day-to-day -day job, none of them look like this. And I think this is the key that we want to get across in the webinar is what do people need to do to to kind of make the visuals stand out to other people. And just, just at the moment, can I just ask everybody to go on to mute, please, uh, whilst we're in the webinar session? Any questions can be asked via the chat functionality and the Q&A functionality. Um, also, if we could, if there are any videos that are on, please can we come off of the web camera as well for the time being? Thank you. Back to you, Leonardo. OK, sure, per perfect. I'll, I'm, I will present at the end how, how we can with a PowerPoint file to build dash, to build backgrounds, and also to change colors, the theme, and to create these two tips. So I think we're gonna have time for that, <laughs> for Perfect. all of that. Okay, another one, okay, this is the same one, but just changing, the, they are the same, the same dashboard, same numbers, but changing only the, the background and the theme. The dark version, the light one, and here I have other visuals, other dashboards as well. As for example, oh, sorry, as a, an income statement, which is very nice for accounting, okay? Logistics and production. So the idea here, here for, by showing these, these dashboards is just to show that there are no limitations regarding visualization, regarding design. You can do whatever you want just by changing background, the theme, and so on. Okay, so, let me go now with my recommendations and I'll, I'll talk to you about all of this that I just showed. And go here. So what are my recommendations? So what you should follow along? Create this dashboard, okay? First, the first and very important, top, the very important point is to identify your audience. So you have to, you, you must ask your user what this user wants to see. If they, if it's a dashboard for operations, it should be different from a dashboard to your CEO, for example, all right? Also, you must choose the right visuals. So there are a, a lot of different types of visuals inside of Power BI, and you might be wondering which visual I should use in each case. So let me open here my demo file. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm going to present the recommendation, and then I'm going to show how to work with this recommendation. So in this demo file, I have a very simple data model, all right? Customer, product, date, and sales, and budget. So for example, how can I say, how can I know which visual I should use in, for example, in a comparison between a category, sales by category? So let me show you here some options, okay? So this is the area, uh, sorry, the bar chart. And if I place, for example, sales amount by country, like this, this is a very good, very good visual to read. It's easy to read. Okay, you have Australia, Australia, United States, and so on. But what about this one? Let me just copy and paste and change this this to a column chart like this. In my opinion, it's not so good not so easy to read like this one, like in the left, because I have to like, see like this, I have to, to, to climb my, my head and I have to scroll the horizontal. And another option could be, for example, let me see here, a pie chart, which people love and I don't like it so much. <laughs> so why, why isn't this not so good? Too many categories and I, can, I can't see correctly the numbers, right? So for categories, the recommendation is to use a bar chart like this. You put your y-axis with your categories. 
Okay, what about comparison over time? If I want to compare sales by date or by, by year, then I would use a, I could use this column chart or maybe a, an area chart, line chart, anything that has the axis on the, the, on the X, on the horizontal axis, okay? So let me change here from country to date, like this. So this is good. This one is good. Also, okay, so I have quarter here, and I can change this, this to a line, line chart, also good, or maybe an area chart, it's okay as well. But never like this. It's, it's not so good to read the time on the, on the y-axis, okay? So always prefer to use a column chart or area chart or line chart for time on the axis. And those are the two, the two most important recommendations. Um, for categories, use, air, use um, sorry, bar chart, Y axis. For time, X axis, or th then you can choose between line, area, or column chart. And for pie charts, okay, so when can we, can we use pie charts or maybe donut charts? In my opinion, when, when we have three to five categories at most, more than three, it becomes a little bit harder to read, and then I prefer to go with the bar chart. So for example, in this case, it would be good to use this, this donut chart if I use, for example, continent instead of country, like this, okay? This is good, it's very easy to understand. I can see those, those three categories, and it's fine. It works very well. All right, so be careful about pie charts. Let me go back to my recommendations. The third one is the following. To draw a sketch and validate this sketch before, before creating our background, for example. So imagine here you have this, this work here, okay? So how, how can I create, how did I create this, this, this dashboard? First, I, cr I created my dashboard without any background to validate this with my user. So before drawing your, your background, before, before creating your background, always validate your dashboard. If the numbers are correct and in the, pro in the uh, proper position and the number of visuals is okay inside your dashboard. And then you go to your dashboard, to your uh, background, all right? Okay, and in, in this rec recommendation, I'm gonna explore a little bit more because about the number of visuals in a page. So the first one is the first recommendation, in my opinion here, is to limit okay the content to fit in on one screen only. And I don't like to use scrolling uh, in my pages, okay, in my dashboards. I prefer to use to create another page instead of instead of expanding this page in the vertical. Also, keep up to five key values, all right? And at most, five to seven visuals in, in your page. So for example, in this case here, in this dashboard, I have too, many inform too much information on the same page. Too many values, too many colors. Uh, I, can, I can't read it properly. So the best, the best approach here is to split this dashboard, split this page into other pages like this, I split this, that page into four pages. This is the first one. And then if I want to see some information about hiring, so this is for human resources, okay? I can create a button here, control click, and I can go there to another, another, another page. I can go back there. Let's say for example, resignations. Then I can click here and I see information only about resignations. So the colors, they must make sense. So the colors here make sense in, and they are consistent along the pages. Color is not only for, the, for making it beautiful, okay? You, you, they should have a meaning as well. All right, next one. Now it's the theme. So my fourth recommendation is about the right theme. So how can I choose the color? 
usually you use the colors from your company, okay? But there is a very nice website here, and this document I will give you after this session, okay? That you can create color, you can create your your palette very easily. So choose the right team and keep consistency as I sh as I showed before. Now, the, the recommendation that I think that will give you the wow effect, which is the background. So in this case, let's do the following. I have here in my second page in this demo file, this dashboard, okay? Sales, budget, orders, and so on. So look at this, very simple, nothing fancy here, the, the original theme and no background at, at, the, at the back. All right, what I can do is the following. I can create, and let's suppose this is, is, is validated. This is my, my sketch that I just validated and it's okay to make it beautiful now. What I'm gonna do is the following. I'm gonna open here a PowerPoint file that also I will give you after this session, okay? That I just create this background, just using blocks, just creating using shapes here. And then you can change your the size of this of these shapes, you can change the colors. It's not, not difficult to use, okay, not difficult to change this. You have this example, also this one. This, where you can place, for example, your slicers there, all right? Or maybe this one, this, 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 another one with more than one, more than one space, more than one block here. And we're gonna use this one, okay? So here, I have some icons. I will also give you a recommendation for where you can get icons. You have here some shapes. You just, you just place the shapes where you want. So for example, in our case, let's go back there. I have one, two, three visuals and one, two, three, four, five uh, KPIs, numbers. So that, that's what I did here. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. And I, get, and I gave, uh, I, I left this space here for filters for other information. So to build this, it's not, not difficult, okay, but you can you can get this file and start changing. For example, let's suppose I want to change this these colors. Maybe I want to make this lighter. You go with the right click, format shape, and here on fill, you can change for this, for example, or maybe the other color another color, like this, and so on. Then you can use this format painter to change this, this, oops, this, this, and this. Maybe this one as well, I don't know. So it just you just created another version for the same background, okay? Of course, I did it here very quickly. It's not so beautiful as before, but okay, just, just to show you how to do this. After this, you go to File, Save As, and you save as either PNG or if you have in your version SVG, it works well as well. Let me go with SVG. Background, save, just this one, all right. So now I have a file in my same folder, in the same folder that I have this PowerPoint file. And then let's go to, to Power BI. And in here, without any, any visual selecting, you go to Format, Page Background, Add Image, and you find your background that you just saved. All right. Then you have to, to position here transparency to zero. All right. Don't forget this. Zero, transparency, and image fit to fit. All right. <laughs> now we're going to work in in our theme, okay? Because I have here a white background in the visuals that I want to remove. My sizes are not okay, they are too big and so on. I can do this one by one. So for example, let's go here in this visual. Let's remove the background, All right? Let's change the color to white. Let's make it smaller, 28 and so on. I could now and um, use this format painter to, to, to send them the same format to other visuals, okay? But in my opinion, it's much easier 
to change this all this formatting here for these visuals in the theme. So let me go back here. Oh, well, let me do this for the phone. And let me go back right from here to this one. So I can change my whole my whole report in my whole report. Uh, these options right here in under view here and now customize current theme. Here you can choose the colors in your palette, all right? And also you can change, for example, the size of the text. Let's suppose I want text in white. My KPIs here, which are those numbers there, they're gonna have, they're gonna have 30 and white as well. And so on. My, oh, sorry. My visuals are actually in, on my visuals. The background is going to be. I cannot put. Uh, I, I cannot remove, but I can place 100 here in the transparency. Apply. There you go. So all visuals at once. Much much more efficient, right? Then you just just now it's just a matter of positioning your visuals, like legal, like. The, how do you call the, the, that 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 the toys for our kids? Where you Lego? Le Lego, Lego. Yeah. yeah, that's the one. <laughs> like so, like this. Let me do this one here. And this okay? And my map. Oops, right there. All right. Of course, I have to change a lot of things here as well. My my titles are in black and so on. Okay, but once you define your your theme, okay, like this here, you can save this this theme so you can use the same one in other reports. So I just did this, okay. I have a theme in my folder as well that I I am gonna use this one. So. You can you can save first here, okay, save, and then later you can browse and use the saved one. Okay, it's a JSON file. If you are curious about this JSON file, you can open and see the, the code inside this file, okay? You have here some, some definitions for the colors and so on. I'm not gonna be worried about this in this session. We don't have time for that. <laughs> Let's go. I'm going to use this thing. There you go. So my titles now are in, in white. Much easier to, to read, much better, much better. Let me just position again these visuals in the proper position. Like this, this, maybe this one, like this. Yes, it's fine. OK. So in my opinion, this background changes everything. When you change the background, and if you use this, the the proper colors, you are maybe I don't know uh, nine percent uh, with your dashboard uh, be, uh, uh, done. Okay, so that's what make makes the difference in your case, in our in our design. Also, something very important is the following. Uh, I like here first to change this map to a dark one, as my background is dark. Let's change map styles from road to dark. It's better. And something important is the following. What if I want to use or to create another visual down there, or maybe up here, to track my orders only, just to show you what I should do in this case, OK? Let me go with another visual. A column chart just to explain about the colors. Yeah. Oh, I've got, um, I've got Sorry, can I just ask everybody to go on mute, please? Really Thank you. Sorry, Leonardo, carry on. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Let's suppose I want to see orders, okay? Orders, my values by. Highlighted. Oh, okay. Orders by continent, maybe. Like this. Okay, so I'm using this blue. There's a reason for me to use to use this blue when I have sales amount. If I want to see orders in the same visual, in the same page, actually, I should change my color to pink. 
be to make to to keep consistency along these colors. So that's what I'm always worried about, and to make this easier for the user. So if the user sees this dashboard, this report, this page, uh, the user could tell this is net sales as well or sales amount in this case. So let's change let's change the colors. In in this case, it's going to be uh, it should be um, manually. Okay, there is no way to or they understand this. So let's go to data colors and I'll change the color to pink. So much easier to understand, right? Just by using the proper colors. All right, guys. Uh, everything clear so far? <laughs> is that, that okay? Definitely is. Would you like to take a couple of questions now, Leonardo? Or would you like sure, to wait sure, until yeah. the end? Okay, It'd fantastic. Be great, yeah. So we have uh, the first question, which is from Tesuro Real. How could you improve insights on a dashboard, and how how can a measure help in this goal? How can we improve insights on dashboards, and how a measure can help in this goal? All right. So when we use measures like this, okay, sales amount, these totals like this they do not give so much information about about the your result if it's good or bad so something i can do is the following let's suppose let me change this to a clustered column chart like this okay and i will use here sales versus budget in my line values sales versus budget right there oops sales versus budget like this okay so is this good or bad? Now I have more, more information to say that in 2008, my sales, oh, sorry, it's all, all here's something important because, or maybe it's better to use budget there. Let's, let me go with budget, total budget like this. Yeah, there you go, yeah. So all of these years, I did not reach the budget, right? So something I could do is to change the colors for my bars to make it better to understand, even better. So I always like to have this comparison between what's, what's good and what's bad. Not only keep the numbers without any, any uh, comparison, okay? So how can I do this? I can do the following. I can go to my format, all right, data colors, and here, instead of using the default color, I can change for, to a specific rule right there. And this rule is based on my sales versus budget. So I'm going to change my field to sales versus budget. And when this value is greater than one, let me change here to number, number, and new rule. So. So I'm gonna use a, then I have to be very careful about the colors, all right? So I, I will use a dark one and a, a light one. So for example, let me go with the dark and the light, in the same color, blue. So when sales versus budget is greater than one, I have sales over budget, right? So it's gonna be dark blue. And here, let me just remove this. Uh, here, so, uh, and here. And when it's less than one, number, number, I'm going to present with a light blue. Okay. So here it's light, all light, because I didn't, I didn't reach the, the goal in none of these years. Let me see if I go down to quarter, month. I think the situation is bad here. <laughs> I don't see any, any dark blue. Okay, but if I had any dark blue here, maybe any... If I had any month over this line, I would have a different color. So it's going to be easier to understand. Yeah, that makes total sense. I think what, what we're saying there is that you would add some more attributes to the visual and then add in some conditional formatting to, to yeah. kind of denote what is good and what's bad and where they are against that. So that's fantastic. Um, we do we do have some more questions, but I'm, I'm keen to let you continue whilst we... Um, okay. In an effort to carry on with time, we'll take some questions again at the end. I'll continue here. Okay, let me go back just to here. All right. Um, so we have this. Oh, let me stop. Let me talk about the icons now. Just to finish my recommendations. Okay, so the sixth one is 
to use icons and images. And I, I recommend this website, which you, where you can download images for free and use in your background like this, okay? Like this pick here, you can use this, this one, okay? So you can download for free right there. You just type what you want to find and you can export as PNG. Something very important that I always recommend is to align visuals, right? Always align visuals properly. This makes total difference for people who have some problems with this, but like me, <laughs> I don't like to see anything that is not aligned. Something very important. People say to me, Leonardo, I'm not a, I'm not creative. I cannot find, um, I cannot create dashboards, um, beautiful dashboards. How can I do? What can I do? I always recommend uh, those people to check for references. You don't have to be creative. You don't have to to create everything from from scratch from your your head, right? You can see some reference to get inspired, and then you can combine some ideas to make your dashboard. So do not be afraid of of looking for your references if you're not um, creative, right? I, I wasn't as uh, creative as well as well. Okay, so the last one is to use visualization features from Power, Power BI, like tooltip, drill through, and bookmarks. So let me show you some of these features inside of Power BI. Okay, so for example, tooltip. What I can do is the following. If I want to see more information about this data in a single visual, for example, when I hover my mouse on top of 2017, Let's suppose I want to see also orders. So I place orders there on two tips. Customers that bought and sales versus budget like this. Okay. Then I have my more information right there, but I can do even better. I can create another page. Okay. I'll call this as two tip. And then on this web page, I will create a visual or something or any any number of visuals that I want to show when I hover my mouse on that other page. All right, so for example, you must go there to format, page information, and uh, enable here to tip. On page size, you have to reduce because it's too large right now. So you can use this predefined to tip, to tip size. So it's smaller, right? It's right there, it's here, All right? And now let's change just our page background or maybe the page, yeah, page background to a dark blue, like this one. Transparency to zero, there you go. All right, let's go with orders, the same numbers, okay? I'm gonna put here the same numbers on this, sorry, this multi-row card. Orders, customers, products, sales versus budget, and total budget. So I have here more numbers in this in this visual. And then let's go back there. And in the configurations for this one, go there to format. Down there you can find two tip. The type should be report page, yeah, and the page should be two tip. All right, now when I hover my mouse there, I see that information that I just created, all right, that visual that I just created. Of course, you can do, you can do better, right? You can, you can create other type of visuals there. You can make it, it bigger if you want, like this. So let me show you some, some of my examples right here. In this case, I think I have some other KPIs, yes, like those. Okay, and this, I don't know if I have something. Yes, I, ha I do. So for example, I have three other KPIs with this line, line visual for the trend. Okay, let's see here. I think I don't have on this one. In this one, I like this a lot because I use this, this smart narratives that I can show as well in a moment. Okay, so these are two tips. What else? 
grew through or our bookmarks bookmarks i think they are very nice because uh, i can hide visuals let me see if i have another example here for this bookmarks here i have on this one okay so for example instead of let's suppose i want to compare my my values for current year and last year by category name by product in this case but i also want to compare by geography by continent by city and so on so instead of instead of duplicating this visual and and placing at the side i create this bookmark okay with this button here that i can change my visual like this so i change from product to geography just by just by using the bookmarks pane and the selection pane right here okay so in, under view i can use bookmarks and my selection pane so my selection pane is just something that i have to work work along with bookmarks to hide a visual and then i add a, a bookmark so for example let's suppose i have this this map here but i don't like maps some some users don't like map and others like map so i can what i can do is the following first i would copy and paste this visual you see no didn't work copy and paste copy and paste place at the same position and in this one i will change to a bar chart like this okay so i have two two visuals on top of each other now let me hide one just hide add a bookmark all right now i will invert i will change i will show this one and hide my let me find right there and hide this one now i add another bookmark and now i can create a button here or somewhere to change these bookmarks like this so bookmark it's like a uh, a photo that I, I just took at the moment that i just added a bookmark so for example going there on insert buttons i'll create one for a blank one whatever a blank button right there all right and this button i can write the text inside of this button for example change visuals okay and i will create an action for this button action where is it there you go action down there down there turn it on and this visual will will call the bookmark for example bookmark two or one maybe bookmark two let's see now i just control click to test and it changes of course i should have another button to change back to the other visual so that's how you can work with bookmarks and selection pane and buttons it's very nice very powerful let me show some, something that very um, uh, advanced like this uh, where this one I, I remember i showed this before so these are bookmarks and for example this one this is a button okay that calls a bookmark and this bookmark is showing this menu here when i click close it calls another bookmark to hide all those information all that information the same thing happens here in this one I want to show a decomposition tree in this page. So I click there and I show this decom decomposition tree right here. When I hit the access button there, I call another bookmark to retrieve this page again. All right. Questions, I think. Yes, indeed. Absolutely fantastic walkthrough there, Leonardo. So thank you very much for that. We do have um, a few questions. So if I just go, you've answered a few already. So the next question um, is from Ala al -Hurani. And the question is, some people ask sometimes for drill down charts, such as a pie chart drill down in the same chart. 
is it doable um, to drill down within the same chart or are drill downs only available for specific charts? No, and every single visual has this option for drill down. So let's suppose I have a pie chart here for this one. Okay? Of course, but pie charts with drill down, maybe they're not the best, the best option because I'm going to show you why. Pie chart, okay, so I have here the content and then let's grab country and I can place country right below continent. So now I just enabled the drill down option. Let's go, for example, to the next next level. Now I have a lot of countries and that's why I don't like so much doing drill, drilling down operation here. I cannot read those, but of course I can do the following. For example, let's go up again and I want to go down only. So I select this button here only on Asia. And then I see the countries for Asia. Okay, so it works. Mm, I think, is it clear? Sorry, it's very clear. Um, I was admitting people to the room, which didn't let me come off. My <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, so yeah, that's very clear. And I, I share your sentiments with with pie charts 100%. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so moving on to the next question, it's from uh, Deepak. And how did you create the metrics measures? Mm. Okay, using the DAX language. So for example, a sales amount, uh, you go here to, the, to a specific table, right click, new measure, and then you have to write this expression. For example, in this case, of course, this, this depends on your model, okay? In my case, I have to do a SUMX over the sales table and apply this multiplication between quantity and unit price and discount amount I have to um, consider as well, like this. So it's using the DAX language. Perfect, thank you. And this one is from Lead Balloon. What is your opinion on dynamic titles for visuals? Good mm, question. Nice. Good question. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> so, for example, here, what I can do is the following. I can create, for example, a new measure. Okay. I like this a lot. Um, that I'll call um, text. I suppose I want to write the following sales amount. versus uh, budget. And then open bracket and open parentheses. Let me close. And I want to combine this or to what do you call combine or merge with a measure sales versus budget like this. And then again, concatenate with the word with this. All right. So I have here a text with a dynamic title because this is dynamic. I made something wrong right there, I think. Yes, okay. And now you go there to the format option for this visual under title. You change this to this function right there. And you use this title right here. Let me find it. Title, text title. Okay, there you go. Of course, you have to format this number, so I can format this as percent percentage. How? Oh, let's go there. Format the format function, and I think there is a predefined one for percent. Maybe I don't remember. Like this. No. Uh, maybe like this. Zero point. Zero, zero, zero yeah. uh, percentage. Something like this. Let's see. Let's see this. So it's that very nice because when I filter, for example, oh, sorry, when I filter a specific, uh, I, I have to see how this number changes. I think it doesn't change over brand. Only over over time. Let me go with a filter, a okay, slicer, and uh, I will place 
the ear there. So if I change my ear to 2018, it's dynamic. It's good. I like it. Perfect. Fantastic. Um, so if we as we move on to the next question, um, mm -hmm. this one is from uh, Tosin, and it is is it possible to do every calculation and transformation in Python, but just do the presentation in Power BI? Um, depends. If you are a Python expert, maybe. But the problem is the following: when you do something outside Power BI, a calculation outside Power BI, it will become a column inside of Power BI. So when you import this table that from Python, from whatever, it's going to be here as a column, all right? And columns are static inside of Power BI. So if you want to perform any dynamic calculation, like this one, this one for example, you must create measures. There's no way to, to uh, ignore measures if you want dynamic calculations. Perfect, great answer. Thank you, Leonardo. Um, very good question as well. Um, as we move on to the next one, this one is from Robert Burrow. And in one of your earlier visualizations where you looked at um, more advanced bookmarks, you pulled out a sidebar which then had further bookmarks within it um, that were used as links. Now, the question is, are those options within the pop-out menu based on a table or fixed text boxes? Um, that I didn't understand the question, I think. Let me see. Options in the pop-up menu based on the table. Yeah, so Can you in, repeat again, please? In the previous visualization, when we were just when you were discussing um, your bookmarks, um, we looked at advanced ways of using bookmarks. I think it was on your um, your own Power BI workspace. Okay. Um, and you have a menu. I believe it's like this one that pops out. Okay. Yeah, so the question is, have you created that using a table or is that a text box? Text box. These are text box, okay? I think these ones, this these are this is only text. So this is a text box. This one is actually I can do let me edit here. Okay. Let me edit. I can show you better. Uh, no, this is some this is a Yes, it's a text. It, no, I'm sorry. This one is a blank button that you that you create that you just like this one, just like this. Okay, a blank button that you can write the text right here. That's how you create this menu right there. Perfect. I mean, to go into that in a bit more detail, you you're activating a, a shape there. Based on the bookmark, and then you that once that shape is activated, it has further buttons on top of it, um, which sit within that bookmark. Is that right? Um, you you say about this dot right there? No. Yeah. So the background for this overlay uh, will be a shape, and then you have blank buttons yes. with text Perfect. values on top of it. Here, yeah, it's a shape right there. It's a shape where you can change the colors, and then you have a lot of a lot of buttons on top of this shape. Okay, that all of them must be uh, hidden when you hit close. But there's something very, very uh, that, that that makes it easier, which is the following: you can, you can, for example, let's suppose I have here a lot of buttons. Okay, like this. Let's see, Control V, Control V. I can group these buttons. So I, I do not need to do all this this operation uh, for for hiding one by one I can do like this I can right click group group and then I can hide the group like this so F fantastic you've just um, answered my question that I was going to ask you as well so um, in terms of the group in um, from a personal perspective uh, I see so many um, power BI reports and dashboards that just have, um, like we have here, which is just individual cards, etc., uh, where the the titles aren't changed, they're within the selection, and they're not grouped. And so I was going to ask your opinion on that. Yeah, no, you should you should group. If you want to hide everything at once, group everything, everything, and you hide just by clicking one button. Much better. Fantastic. Totally agree. Um, okay, so we're going to move into the next question, which is from uh, Carlos Coelho, and 
his question is when is your power bi experience course going to be available in english okay thank you for the question <laughs> i'm gonna say this about uh right now um on march 8th okay i'm gonna be presenting the power bi uh, week and during this event i'm gonna talk about my course and open again for new new students so can i drop the the link of or course, please do. Yeah, please pull it into the chat. So this one is our event, okay? And you just you can you can sign up for free to watch this event. And during this event, I'm gonna create this dashboard here from zero, from scratch. So there are four classes, okay, that you can follow along. And during this event, I'm gonna talk about my complete course. So let me just place it right there. The event for free. Fantastic. We we love we love free. <laughs> <laughs> Myself included, and I will def I will definitely be there yeah, as well. I agree. Okay. Uh, so I'll just move on to the next question, um, which is: Do you use bookmarks to reset the filters? Mm, nice. Okay. So when you change visuals like this, let me just get rid of those. Oops, sorry. I cannot get get rid of the group. I have to ungroup first. group all right okay and let me go back to my other bookmark like this all right okay so i just created this button that changed changes visuals okay if i make a filter like this i just filtered for one single ear and europe if i click on this change visuals it will reset my filters so this is working. This could be actually a uh, bookmark for resetting filters. Okay, this, this is how you can do. Uh, if you want this to change visuals and do not change, do not um, um, do not reset the filters. Okay, so keep the data as as it was. You have to do something here in this bookmarks, which is the following. You have to go there to the three dots and enable disable actually data. Disable data there and there. Now, let me go again with 2018 Europe. When I change visuals, it will keep the filters, okay? To create a boot button to reset filters, you just have to uh, clear all filters first, okay? Clear all filters and create a bookmark that you can call, for example, reset filters, reset. When I place, when I filter here, for example, again, 2018, Asia, and I use another button to call this reset filters, it will clear the filters. So just create a, uh, a bookmark without any filter and call that bookmark. Fantastic. Thank you, Francis and Leonardo, and great point in disabling the data option as well. So thank oh, yeah, you for putting yeah. that out as well. Um, as we move on to our next question, um, Deepak asks, are you going to share the dashboards and the data so that um, the users here can have a play around with it? Mm -hmm. This one, okay, this, this file here, um, and also my PowerPoint, and also my notes, these notes. I will create this link that we talked about before, Leon. Yes. And then we're going to send by email, right? Or That's maybe on, the, on YouTube, I can, yeah. Yeah, so what will happen, and this, this answers the next question that we've been asked by a few users as well. Rose asks this and a, and a few other um, users have asked, is um, the session going to be available after today? And um, the session has been recorded. It will be available on Leonardo's YouTube and will be posted as a video um, to LinkedIn also. And as Leonardo goes on to say, all of the um, the, cri the criteria and work that he's been through today in terms of the notepad and the visualizations and the PowerPoint for backgrounds will be available there also. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Fantastic. Um, and that's going to be the end of the questions um, for today's session. I would just like to, um, first and foremost, thank Leonardo for taking us through his beautiful dashboards and um, showing us a bit more of the detail and how he creates those. Um, and if I could give you uh, a round of applause or a virtual round of applause, I would for presenting <laughs> um, in your second language. 
um, as well. So presenting in English must have been quite difficult for you. So very, very well done and really appreciate having you with us, Leonardo. Thank you very much. Um, second, thank you. Secondly, um, I'd just like to go on to thank um, our sponsors, uh, which is Onyx Data, um, for giving us the opportunity to put on this event and also welcome you all to join the Microsoft Power BI UK meetup group and also our LinkedIn group, uh, where we'll be having further monthly webinars. And hopefully we can have Leonardo on with us again, uh, where I'm sure that his dashboards are just going to continue um, to get more beautiful and more beautiful. So I'd That's like great. to thank everybody for joining us, because um, you could have been anywhere in the world, um, but you took the evening to be here with us. So thank you. Thank, thank you, Leonardo. guys. Thank you for being here. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. What about us? Should we? <laughs> it's recording. No, it's still live. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was really useful. Thank you.